Are you looking for a podcast about getting vaxxed in both arms? Then you must be thinking of another podcast. Ouch! Good evening, Kelsey. Good evening, Robert. I apologize. I have done everything in my power to get rid of whatever's in my throat. It's not COVID. We will press it. We will preface it with it's oh, not COVID. <laughs> it's so not COVID. I can hold my breath forever. But like, <laughs> I don't know. There's like, have you ever had? Have you ever had a dreams? <laughs> Have you ever had, like, I guess it's phlegm, but just, like, something that's, like, right at the base of your throat, and, yeah. like, when you clear it, you feel it come up, but when you swallow, it just goes right back to where it was? Just settles right back in that little spot? Yep, it's comfy phlegm is what they that, call it. Okay, I have the comfiest phlegm. He's so happy <laughs> here, dude. I guess I could just take a mucinex and just, like, destroy him. You God, know? I took mucinex exactly once in my life, and I don't know if it was, <sighs> like an allergy to the medicine or if it's just the way it's supposed to work destroyed me because I'm an asthmatic. But like I, I coughed, I nonstop, like nonstop coughing for 24 Dude. straight hours. I thought I was going to die. Mucinex is my favorite medication. Oh, it was so bad to me. I, it cleans I, me out. I was like holding my inhaler, just like clutching it for the oh entire my day. God. Like, I'm going to die. Like if there's one medicine that is like, on hold in the house like it's always there it's mucinex yeah because anytime like we get like bronchitis or an upper respiratory whatever fucking mucinex and we're better in like two three days man you know i love mucinex it's so good you know what i love is a good old canada dry ginger ale of course i cracked a dr pepper and i know we didn't write this down in the you know the notes for the thing but we did our rose rose thorn buds yeah i have a new year's resolution oh you don't have to have one because i know not i usually don't do them because i never have anything that i want to be different okay like i'm not like i'm gonna play less games next year fuck that dude my <laughs> okay. my resolution would be play more games yeah but i do have a legit one this time what do you have kelsey Robert. I don't know what happened. If you if you're mean to yourself right now, I'm no. gonna hang up this call. <laughs> but I got a little like COVID tummy gut, man. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I went hard on like the water burger this year <laughs> or if the Comfort peppers foods. finally turned on me <laughs> or what, man. But like Taylor was coming home from work and was like, "Let's run to the store real quick, right?" Yeah. So she was like, I'm outside. We got to go. And I was like, oh, fuck. Throw, throw Bulbasaur in the back. This was like weeks ago. This is not a current story. Okay. But I like throw Bulbasaur in his crate, tell Jinx to get in there. And I'm like, all right, got to throw pants on. So take off, you know, comfy pants. And I threw on my <laughs> jeans and I go, <laughs> and fucking, I couldn't even buckle the belt, man. Oh, no. Like I was trying too fast. And like, I guess I didn't have time to like warm up the jeans or something. <laughs> and I was like is there something wrong? And I was like, yes. Like, he is prominent. Like, I've lived in these comfy pants too long. Like, I never noticed. Oh, no. Like, I lived in Costco pajama pants for the past what happened. six months, right? God. And they stretch with me. So I never <laughs> noticed. <laughs> I didn't feel anything. But the jeans, the jeans don't lie, man. Yeah. They straight up say, hey, you're big now. And, I mean, we, we already know I couldn't even dress up for James Bond this year because I couldn't fit in my pants, right? Oh. So, like, it's there. I wrote off the James Bond one as, well, these are, like, suits that I had made in high school. Like, of course yeah. they probably don't fit, right? Yeah. That's life. But these are, like, my current jeans. <laughs> that I didn't buy all that long ago. And I was like, I got to like, squeeze it in there, you know, stuff it in. So I am going to get more fit and healthy for 2022. That's my goal. Okay. I will support this as long as you do it in a healthy way. <laughs> to the point. Ready for this? 
Yes. The only peppers I'll have are right here on this show. One, oh my God. One, one a week, man. One a week? What are you doing? One a week. <laughs> You're going to, I'm going to find you in one week's time, like fucking burnt out face <laughs> down in a gutter surrounded by the, the litter of peppers. Um, Taylor found me a pretty good, like, substitute. Okay. We may hear them on the show. We'll see. Okay. They don't crack, though, which is the problem, because they're in, like, oh. bottles. They're kind of like La Croix, Ooh. But more flavorful and not okay. as bubbly. Because it's the... It's more the bubbles that I don't like in La Croix. Like, they're too carbonated, right? Yeah, that's why I like them, though. Yeah, I know. You guys and your bubble water. It's too I much like for me. bubbles. I think it's just, like, Walmart brand, like, fruit water, I guess. Oh, uh, I don't like even know. Clear American or something? Something like that. Yeah, it's got the stupidest name. <laughs> Dude, that one I sipped on, though, was nice. All right. Maybe I'll just have more water that way, because I want to get back on having more water. Yeah. Like, when I went into the office, I had water all the time. Yeah. But, like, being at home, I might drink, like, one Bucky's cup a day. Oh, my gosh. I used to have, like, three a day, you know? You got to get back in the habit of doing that. I have myself this water bottle that makes a guest appearance every time we're doing a Twitch stream. I've got it next to me all the time. It says, hydrate or die. A stark reminder. (laughs) I don't know if it's just the water lately in this apartment that the bridge is not even helping because it's just not as good as it used to be maybe there's a corpse in your water tank something's up with this water and i just don't drink as much as i used to okay because i even had a bunch of water when we lived on the third floor i used to drink a shit ton of water still yeah but i'm getting back in the water i might have some of those lacroix style waters just to have a little bit more water intake enjoy it and the peppers slim way down so that even means mansion night, man. Oh, no. You're going to bring a whole 12-pack to kill off? Not of peppers. Okay. Like, I might not bring peppers to mansion night, man. Oh, I'm going to have to... So I'm I'm going to put you on to Soda Streams because, my goodness, the Soda Stream that Richard got me for Christmas, I think I talked about it last show, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's fucking good. I, I've been carbonating up myself some waters. And so see, I could do... Like a one press of carbonation instead of the yeah. 20 that you do. Yeah. <laughs> I It recommends three. I always do like four good strong presses. Ugh. God. <laughs> okay. get that extra bubble in there. But yeah, if you want it like super lightly carbonated, you can have that. <laughs> like it, it can happen. I could do that. I might trade out the Keurig for the soda stream. Yeah. That'll work. Because you talked about it last time, I wanted to go ahead and give you... Uh, stuff I got for Christmas, real quick. What'd you get for Christmas? Uh, it's pretty, pretty low-key Christmas. I think people will be surprised by my favorite thing that I got. Okay. Uh, well, Taylor got me a massage gun thing. Oh, yes. We have one of those. It's been so good. dying for. Yes. And, yeah, dude, that thing works. Yeah, you like... Put the little ball attachment on yes. the end of that thing and just fucking get in the shoulder blades. It's so nice. Now, me and Taylor are the same, though, when it comes to, like, the electric massager things like that. Yeah. Our skin gets itchy after oh, yeah. a while. Yeah, I don't so know So that's why she is. hates them. I think it's, like, the blood flow situation. Like, it just gets the blood mm. going to that area. Yeah. Like, this one hadn't really done it to me that bad. Okay. But, like, I did it to her forearms because, you know, she grooms and stuff. So, like, her wrists and her forearms are fucking, like, sore all the time. Yeah. So I was like, where can I, like, sway you on this gun? So I put it on her forearms and she was like, that's not going to, oh, <laughs> stay there forever. <laughs> so I got her sold on the gun. Good. Um, Then I got, as you heard in the pre-ramble, I got the new Assassin's Creed. I guess. Just got, got tons of gift cards. Got some Best Buy, some GameStop. So I got to pick and choose how I'm going to use those. I'm debating on my Best Buy. It's either going to be towards an Xbox if I can ever swing one. Okay. Or I don't know if I do an SSD for the PS5 to upgrade Ooh. the storage. Yeah. I can't decide. Or get yourself a new CPU. Or a new CPU. We'll have to see. Now I'm thinking too much. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> uh, then I got like some other like odds and ends. I got, of course, from my mom, socks. Nice. 
Dude, that's how I stay in socks. <laughs> it's like Christmas because over the course of the year, I don't know what it is, but like the heels in my socks just deteriorate. I my my feet eat socks. I don't yeah, know what the deal is. Bladed heels. I don't know what the deal is. Like I don't pull them as tight up as I cuz I used to like pull them up as tight as I could. <laughs> Yank them up with your calf suspenders. And that's why I felt like my heels would wear out cuz like I'm pulling them too tight like I'm stretching them, right? Yeah. But like I don't do that now and I bought like padded heel socks and they still okay. wear out. I don't Man. know what my I I don't know what's wrong with me. You just get like like I don't know, sock eating feet. I said I had acid heels. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I just I just like burn right through them. So I got some of those, and then I think Taylor Taylor nailed me with my favorite one. So we did Christmas. We did like the majority of our presents together first. Yeah. And then we did like a family one, but we took what we thought would be each other's favorite over there. So we brought like one for each other, right? Okay, that's nice. So we took the one that we thought each one would like the best. May not be the most expensive, but this is this will be your favorite, right? Okay. And we both nailed each other big time. Nice. I got her a Sailor Moon jewelry music box. Oh, pretty. And it actually, she said it plays the song the exact way it does from the music box that's in the show. Cool. Which that wasn't a plan of mine. I, I was just like, oh, it's a music box version. That's cool. <laughs> but it's really pretty. Like, I love that thing. It looks so good. And she got me a Funko Pop. Okay. Why? Would this Funko Pop mean so much to me? Is What's it, the deal? Is it gold, Samus? It's not anything video game. It's not Spider-Man. It's not gold. It's, it's nothing. It's a personal Robert Pop. Yeah, it's just like something that I would dig. I pulled it out. I cried. You cried? <laughs> I did cry because I was thinking about the thing that it is. You ready? Okay. It's a Funko Pop mini of the Kit Bull Pixar short. Do you remember I'm, Kit Bull? I'm not familiar with that one. It's a little short film about a cat that like lives in these boxes in the sky's oh. ba- ba- backyard. Yeah. Yeah, and he brings a pit bull in and uses it for dog fighting and when the dog loses, he kicks the dog out into the rain to like just like stay outside. Fucking horrible. Just fucking like disposes of this dog and this dog and this cat become friends. And it's the greatest short of all time. I remember you telling me about this and you were like, you can't watch it because it's too sad. And so I haven't watched it. I literally cry so much every time I watch it. Yeah. Like just looking at stills from it. I recall looking these up and being like, oh yeah, that is going to make me cry. (laughs) It's my favorite short film like of all time. And it has not a spoken word in it. And you know, that gets me too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The fact that it's so powerful with no words, right? Yeah. But dig on this. You ready? Okay. I was watching it again the other day. Bulbasaur started to watch it with us. Oh, my God. And he started crying. Stop. While watching it. He was so into it. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, my God. It speaks to the animals. Like, Like, the emotion is so raw. That, like, everybody picks up on it. Oh, my God. So, anyway, I I have a little fun co-pop of it, and I stare at it, and I well up with tears and go, that's the best short ever, and I love it. I fucking <laughs> love this thing. You'll post that on our Instagram. That sounds adorable as hell. Oh, it's so cute, dude. I fucking love it so much. Like, Taylor just goes, I knew it'd be your favorite, and I was like, I fucking love it. <laughs> it's so cool. So... After all Christmas happened, it was your birthday. Happy birthday again. Thank you. It was my birthday. It was a really super good birthday. It's been it's been a year and it's been a time, but like we yeah. Richard gave me like a really really nice birthday. So for uh for my birthday eve, I guess, he okay. gave me like a, a two-day celebration which in true Richard Woo. fashion and he always goes over the top and I love him for it. Um, well, you do you do love your birthday, so I do it's love kind my of birthday. Like needed, <laughs> I know he he knows exactly how to how to make my birthday wonderful. Um, so yeah, we went to an Italian restaurant called Ferraris. Have you ever been there? I have heard of it. 
It's expensive, but it was good. It was okay. Fucking good. The food was absolutely delicious. And uh, so <laughs> to talk about this next part, I have to describe there's always a goal kind of like that Richard and I have where the concept of having like what we call fuck you money <laughs> where okay. you can just like spend money on anything and it doesn't matter to you. Like we have not reached that point in our lives, unfortunately. And I don't know if we ever will, honestly, because like when we, when we think of fuck you money, it's like I bought a hot air balloon just so I can, you know, say fuck you. Oh, that is intense. Fuck you money. <laughs> yeah. Um, my so, like, fucking of... money is like I want to buy a CPU and not worry about it. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I'm talking like, like, like Elon Musk type money. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like stupid amounts of money. And in my head, like, fuck you money to me means being able to get a hotel room where there's a hot tub in it. Okay. That just sounds like too much. <laughs> and after dinner. He made that happen. <laughs> okay. He like took me to a hotel and I was like, why are we going to a hotel? And he's like, no, just wait. We get up there and there's a fucking hot tub in the room. And I was like, are you kidding? And he was like, it wasn't even that expensive. Oh my God. So yeah, we had a, a hotel room with a hot tub in it and it was just the, the most ludicrous thing. And I had gotten like a to go dessert from the Italian restaurant. And so and you ate it in the hot tub. <laughs> I did. Beautiful. <laughs> But they didn't give me utensils to go, so I'm just like <laughs> sitting in this hot tub, shoveling chocolate mousse so you into went my mouth the with true my fingers. Most fuck you style rich person it thing, was... just like eating <laughs> eating food with your bare hands in your hot tub felt, in your hotel room. It felt so hedonistic. I was like, this is the pinnacle of being alive right now. I'm, I was very very happy. So yeah, that, that... was. It's amazing. That was really, really fun. <laughs> and now I can say that I have done that. And so for the next day, my parents actually bought us tickets to um, the Van Gogh exhibit that has been in town. Like the interactive, okay. not interactive, uh, immersive yeah, Van yeah, Gogh yeah. exhibit. Where like you go into a room and his paintings are displayed on the wall and it's like yeah. they're alive kind of. I didn't know what to expect from that. So I thought it was going to be like a thing where they had each individual painting up, but it was kind of like in GIF format or something. So it would like have a, like a motion to it, like a looping thing. Yeah. But it wasn't that at all. <laughs> it was basically like a film that was playing on all four walls, but it was stitched so that it looked like one seamless thing. And it was just like being kind of a part of his paintings because stuff is like moving all around you and you're kind of getting a 3d view of some of the paintings yeah. that he did and it's company with like music and movement and all that kind of stuff. It was really cool. And the way that it's done. So they have it across three rooms and we didn't know how busy it was going to be. So we got into the first room and there were a couple seats, like pretty central to like the main wall. So it was like, cool, let's just sit here and enjoy the film. Cause it's like a 30 minute film. That's just on loop all day. So okay. we go and sit down and watch it and it was wonderful. Move me to tears and so then we go to leave and you have to like go through the rest of the rooms to leave and into the second room we go in and it's like a two story room and there's like balcony seating. And I was like, damn it, this would have been an even cooler place to watch it from. Yeah. And then we go into the third room and it's another big room and there's like a bunch of mirrors in the center so that it's like refracting everything all around. And I was like, God, why did we stay in the first room? This is, Oh my God. <laughs> it's bullshit. Yeah. But, it was it was still really awesome, and I would recommend anybody who is interested in Van Gogh or in art in general to watch it because it was a good time. Well, nice. I yeah. think I think Haley went to that when it first came to town. Yeah, it's been here for a while, and they were going to uh, move on and shut it down, but I guess it was like back by popular demand, or yeah, enough people didn't get good. to go. Yeah, I I imagine that. I don't know with COVID, they probably didn't have as big a turnout as they wanted, but. It was, it was nicely, it was distance, but still busy, you know? So. I want them to bring back the, the body works thing where you oh, have like the yes. muscles and like vein systems and stuff all on display. That was like 2010 when they had that come through town. That was forever ago. I loved that thing though. It was very cool. I remember going to that and being like, like freaked out, but amazed. Like, like bodies a, is gross. That's a, that's veins. Yeah. Yeah. Bodies is gross. Like, do you think that is a thing that could ever come back? I mean, like, probably. Once, like, a like, an exhibit like that kind of 
appears. Does that ever like reappear, or, or is it always like repurposed into something new later? I feel like it just kind of goes. If it's one of those touring exhibit things, it just kind of is going around the states okay. or whatever. Let me have a look. Bodies, art exhibit. It's called like Body Works or something. Body Worlds. Body yeah, is the exhibition. That's what yeah. it is. Is that even a thing anymore? Is it bot? Hold on. Okay, so body is the exhibition. Not similar to, but though not affiliated with the exhibition, Body Worlds. <laughs> I think body is the exhibition is what you and I are thinking of. Just looking at these pictures here. Um, I found a thing here. It says body is the exhibition 2022 tour date. So I guess it's still out there somewhere. Okay. Uh, Creepy. There's like unknown origins of some of the cadavers that's Ooh. <laughs> don't like that yeah i'm not gonna okay. go to that again but still <laughs> okay yeah closing that well Wikipedia time. i am very happy for your birthday i'm glad yeah. you had a wonderful one it was super fun and i loved it and also if you missed it please check out kelsey gushing about dice all for her birthday <laughs> on her patreon review this past month yeah that was that was a lot of fun to do and I, I hope you guys enjoy watching me talk about it as much as I enjoyed talking about it. I would do that again. <laughs> just yeah. with just with a new run of dice. It was fantastic. I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, after your birthday, we've, over the last few days, I've just been kind of like chilling and playing games since we've been off of work. Okay. Um, we started this new series of games. Uh, they're called the Zero Escape Trilogy. Have you heard of these? No. So they're like visual novel style games, but they're it's kind of like a visual novel combined with a virtual escape room. Okay. Um, I, I always stayed away from them because it seems like they would be a timed thing where you have to like, you, you have five minutes to solve this puzzle, go that sort of thing. Yeah. And those always freak me out and I can't do them. But um, no, as it turns out, there's no like actual time despite the persist, like you'll be in a room. It's like the room is filling up with water. You better solve the puzzle and get out. But the room is not actually filling up with water. You have unlimited time to complete the puzzle. It's more like this is what happened next. It's just ha however long it takes you to get to the next step. Yes, exactly. Like the water's f filling and then they solve the puzzle and you just yes. get time to do the puzzle. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So the, it's a trilogy. The first two games come as a bundle. So that's what we're working through right now. We beat the first one. It's just called, um, it's called 999 for short, but for long, it's nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. Okay. And it was released in 2009, <laughs> ironically. So okay. it's actually developed by Spike Chunsoft, who you might know from, uh, why did I just forget the name of the fucking teddy bear, the black and white teddy bear? Oh, Dongarampa? Yes. <laughs> the, those games. Um, okay. So it's the same people, and... It has kind of the same, like, sense of humor about it. There's, like, a creepy little stuffed rabbit who's like, I'm going to kill you if you can't get out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I just wanted to talk to you about the character models. So the first game, I loved a lot. The art style for it was very cool. Um, it's kind of like the characters are hand-drawn and they have kind of limited actions. They look like, like general sprites, you know. And I want okay. to show you one of my favorite looking characters. Her name is Clover. Okay. She's just like a cute young girl. Yeah. And uh, well, I have pasted you a gif, but it's not actually in motion for some reason. But I don't know. She's just cute. She's got like leopard earmuffs and pink hair, pig, giant pigtails, a fluffy coat. She and looks very standard anime girl. Yeah. She has a lot of personality. Um, let me just show you this picture, which is... Um, in one of the timelines, because this is a, a branching timeline game. Okay. Uh, she has an axe in this one, a very bloody axe, for one reason or another. Yeah. She has a lot of personality, and I like her. And in the second game, she does make a comeback. So, I don't know if, if you guys want to, if you want spoiler warning for this, I guess it's a little bit late for me to say spoilers now, but <laughs> Clover comes back in game two, and they have updated her look, and it's severely worse <laughs> oh no <laughs> and it just makes Do me not sad like yeah so the whole game like the first game is just beautifully drawn and it yeah, looks the, so good yeah the, yeah the first one's drawn and then it goes 3d models yeah they have these like polygon ugly they're just like low poly models of the characters and yeah, they're like they, ps2 graphics 
Yeah, and the colors are all faded. They're just generally ugly. And also, everyone is wearing way less clothes. <laughs> like, what Very happened? Very much so. Uh, so they've downgraded Clover from this, like, cute puffy jacket and a schoolgirl uniform into just, like, a leopard print bikini with a fluffy collar. I was about to say, I see see knees in her original (laughs) outfit, and I see everything in her new outfit. Yes. Um, Yeah, and this, like, stupid vacant smile that she wears, she's just, like, hanging out there with a wink with her arm behind her head, and she keeps that pose for, like, the most inappropriate conversations. Like, oh, there's a bomb in here. We're all gonna die. And she's, like, posing like this with that vacant smile on her face. And I'm just kind of over it i can't uh, the, get over the girl next to her yeah the one like, who's like only wearing a necklace <laughs> well that's not my problem with it but yeah <laughs> she's wearing a metal <laughs> necklace that is just covering her boobs yeah uh, not covering for, her boobs covering her nipples yeah <laughs> for me it's it's the uh the like pose yeah like nobody actually does this no that's that's another problem i have with with this game yeah i the the first one they had a a few different animations they would have like she jumps up and down when you solve a puzzle she's like yeah we're gonna get out or you know just general general stuff that humans normally do with their bodies yeah and these girls are sitting there with like weird finger poses over their eyes and like yeah i don't like that stuff (laughs) what are you doing (sighs) so yeah, we're currently playing through the second game. It's called Virtue's Last Reward, and the game itself, too, is much lower quality than the first one. It's a slog to get through, and it's a game that has a lot of different branching timelines, so, like, you can choose to, it. Uh, what do you call it? It has the prisoner's dilemma a lot, where you have to, like, choose to ally with your person or betray them and steal their points. Okay. So, like, you can both ally and get two points, or you can betray them and get three points and they get zero, or if you both betray, you both get zero. Okay. So, yeah, it relies on that mechanic quite a bit, and each time you go through one of these, only some things change, but you still have to sit through the dialogue, which can be, like, like hours of dialogue of the same yeah. stuff happening over and over again, and you're like, I've seen it six times, I understand what happens, nothing has changed. It's very frustrating. Yeah. So And also with this game, it has nine different endings. We've been playing it for 18 hours, have gotten zero endings so far. Oh, my God. We've died okay. four times. We've gotten three, like, roadblocks that we don't have enough information to get past yet. So we just have to keep going back to the fucking beginning and playing through these stupid timelines over and over and over again. That did not happen in the first game. In the first game, yeah. like, whenever you had a branching timeline, everything was completely different. And there was no repeating dialogue. There was no repeated scenarios. It was just everything changed if you made a different decision. And I'm very frustrated with this one. Um, it's a trilogy, and I we've already bought the third game. So yeah. I want to play it. But, my God, if it's anything like this one, I'm going to be sad. I I like Spike Chunsoft, and I like what they do. I just hope that the third game redeems what has been going on in the second one. I don't want to look up screenshots and let you know, but I just I just want you to experience it. Yeah, I'll just I'll report back once we play through, once we finish the second one, which may be a while. Yeah. And um when we get to the third one, if the art has deteriorated even further. <laughs> yeah. So aside from that, um I have also been playing a little bit more back for blood. Okay. Have have you had the opportunity to play some more? No. Okay. Because I, I will only play this with people and <laughs> I'm alone. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not good when you're not playing with people you don't know. So yeah. I was playing a game with um, two of my Overwatch friends and just letting the fourth slot either fill in with a bot or some online random person. Okay. And it's not bad when you have like three people working together and then one rando that you can't rely on. Yeah. Some people online are way better than others. Like some will stick with you and, you know, help you loot and stuff where other people are just like, I'm on the other side of the map and I'm down. Voice chat is also a fucking nightmare if you are ever in voice chat with a random person. So we were on the the boss, like the last part of it. We've played through the entire game, got to the boss and on our first attempt, we were paired with this dude whose name was like acid stoner 420 or something stupid like that okay 
And he kept fucking up. Like, he would just lose all of his health in one run and just be standing in the fucking, like, flower spout acid. Have you gotten to the, the final boss? Dude, I haven't Back played this game. Oh, well. <laughs> and like, the final boss, there's, like, several... I don't even think I've, I've, like, made it to Act 2. Oh, man. Really? I, I don't get to play it. We've got we've got to make we have to set aside time for this game you and I and Ferdinand because he's also bought it now. Yeah. Um yeah, so in the final boss it's in three stages. In stage 1, there's like these big tentacles that are coming up through the ground that you have to fight. If you don't want spoilers for Back for Blood's final boss fight, <laughs> please fast forward. So there's these flower spouts and when they die, they shoot acid out of them. Beautiful. And if you, if you don't know that, it's it's, you know, you'll, you might be standing right next to it when it goes off. And then yeah. you could realize, oh, no, acid's coming out of the flower and walk away from it. Or if you're acid stoner 420, you just kind of die in the acid and blame us about it. Well, <laughs> so, he's acid stoner. He likes yeah. the acid, man. He has to sit in the acid. Yeah. And then um, he was also in the habit of, like, grabbing all the med packs around. And the way we've built our team, we have a clear, like, tank, DPS, and healer in a, in a squad. So my friend Rob has dumped all of his stats and all of his cards into healing. So his duty, we, we basically pack mule bandages and like kits for him and then just drop them. And whenever we need heals, he'll pick them up and heal us because he can heal us for like 200%. And then it also yeah. heals him at the same time. So of course you want the healer to be doing the healing. Yeah. And, uh, this dude is just running around like eating all the med packs and oh my, God. My, my other friend Alex gets in voice and is like, Hey, we have somebody on our team who is built for healing. So if you just drop it, we can heal you. And the dude jumps in voice. He's like, well, you never healed me before. And I'm not going to make you start healing me now. Oh my God. <laughs> and just like starts yelling about how we're not healing him. Like you are picking up all the med packs. I hate playing online with random people. That is one oh, thing. It's, yeah. It's bad. It's so bad. Oh my God. So we tried two runs at the boss with this dude, and every single time he was dead weight that we were dragging through the entire game. And our third run, we got lucky enough to just get a bot. <laughs> just a bot. Okay. And I was like, okay, at least we're not going to be dragging dead weight. Like, the bots will, they'll heal you. They'll drop ammo. Yeah. They're okay. They're not good at shooting or anything like no, that. No, they just stand there and die. Yeah, but... Luckily, for the final boss fight, it's basically this big worm dude, and you have to shoot its weak spots, and that's the only way you can do damage to it. Okay. And I, we we had this thing, like, dead to rights. It was so, it was so low, and it's crawling through this big tunnel on its way to go, like, fuck out Fort Hope, where you're all based at. Okay. So you have to kill it before it gets there. And my, my teammates couldn't find the final weak spot. They're like, I can't see this all on the right. We have like one on the right and one on the left and nobody can find it. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to jump down and see if I can get it on its back. And as it's slithering through, I can see there's like this big glowing thing on its belly. And I'm like, Oh, the belly of the beast. And I like sprint and I get up underneath it. And I've got this light machine gun just pointing straight up at this thing, just absolutely laying into it. it it felt like i was in an action movie this game okay. has a way of making you feel like a goddamn hero and i was sitting underneath this thing just like Rah! and finally like killed it and we beat the game and i was so high on that feeling <laughs> i was i was like i was feeling good man i have oh my God. i have never felt such euphoria at beating a game in such a long time yeah it was amazing like everything explodes and everyone's like oh you saved the world it's just, it's a good game. I can't recommend it Back for Blood enough. It's so much fun. One day I'll potentially play it. Who knows? You need to play more with me. We will beat this game together. Yeah, you, will have, like, you will have the euphoria with me. You could play Left 4 Dead alone. Which yeah. I did quite frequently. But like, I had like a group at that time and we played it a lot. I play with two people now and it's like once a month maybe yeah if that so multiplayer games are not my cup of tea yeah i never get to do that very much we should set aside some time put it on the calendar and we will make things happen because this game is just too good it's a it's a fun experience yeah it's got the whole christmas update i don't even know what that looks like it's cute they have like a little christmas tree at fort hope i can't remember what else they changed there's like presents in the shooting range that you can explode here, when did we play it last? Whenever we reviewed it. Or like the review? 
Yeah. That's the last time I even turned it on. My God, you have to play some more. It's such a fun game. Like, you love this game, too. I know you do. It's yeah. just, it's hard to make time for. But this is one of those games that I could see myself playing years into the future, especially if they keep, co- if they keep coming out with new content updates or new acts, online content, I'm stuff like that. I'm really curious what the season pass stuff will be. Yeah. So. They did introduce a feature now where you can play as... Um, the infected in the shooting range. So I'm thinking mm-hmm. they're going to do something with that. I don't know if they have yet or not. Yeah. But yeah, this game, if there's anybody out there on the fence about back for blood, you should get it like fully get I this mean, game. It's it is pretty so fucking much fun. fun. It's so much fun. Like I, I cannot even begin to describe how excited I was to beat this game. And now I'm going to go back and play it on the next difficulty. I'm just, I'm ready for more. Like, go watch our review of it and see it in action and us being like, whoa, because yeah. it was a good time. It's a good time. Okay, you ready to go to a quick ad break here? Yeah, let's do that. I've heard that, like, you can enjoy the show knowing nothing about The Witcher at all. That so I'm, is what I I've heard, watch it. and I'm going to watch it. Yeah. I solely want to watch it for one reason. Is it for Geralt? Because he's cute. Well, it's more the man behind him. Okay. (laughs) Henry Cavill. Yeah, he's cute. The simple fact that that man is a legit gamer, which did you know he's like a legit gamer? I did not. He's been late to like filming sessions because he was like, oh, I was playing World of Warcraft. Sorry, guys. I lost track of time. What the fuck? He's a for real gamer. I just Googled Henry Cavill. Cavill? Cavill? Cavill. Cavill. I just Googled this man. This is a picturesque article henry stands in a miami hotel room oh looking God. like a comic book drawing made real he's six foot two but seems taller because he's so broad his muscles stretch an ordinary oh. camel colored knit shirt into a bulky superhero outfit what is this who wrote this they were too thirsty i mean he's a pretty thirst trap of a dude he's pretty <laughs> awesome i do kind of <laughs> like him he cute though All right, guys, if you enjoyed that little bit of the pre-ramble, don't forget you can get that full bonus episode by going over to patreon.com slash ymbtoap and signing up to be a patron. We love and appreciate you guys so much. We couldn't do this show without you. If you missed it in the feed, we did drop an entire pre-ramble episode for you guys for a New Year's present. So go open it up. Have a listen. That's right. We did. In case you aren't a patron and you want to know what one is like, Gave you guys one for Christmas. Hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, and if you want just a little bit more, if you like that pre-ramble that you got for Christmas, you want a little bit more, we have some gear over at the Yim Tote Peril store. The link is in our show notes. We've got t-shirts, uh, long sleeve shirts, tank tops, hoodies, zip-up hoodies, tote bags, coffee mugs, face masks, all kinds of stuff. Lots of good stuff in there. Uh, we just all. wanted we just wanted to thank our patrons again. You guys are the best. And now let's get back to that regularly scheduled content. Oh, man. I What's went up? to go see a movie. Ooh. Okay. Man, I haven't been to a movie in a minute. What's up? Yeah, you I haven't been, been in quite some time. We went to, um, first of all, we went to Studio Movie Grill because we, we had a gift card for the Galaxy Theater, which is the nicer theater in the area. And we okay. wanted to go there, but this movie was not showing there. And I was disappointed. So okay. we ended up going to Studio Movie Girl. And I might be off the Studio Movie Girl chain because the uh, both of our seats were broken. <laughs> ah, so you're finally getting the true Studio Movie Girl experience. <laughs> yeah, it's like so run down. <laughs> Not we the been, new one. We haven't been in a year or so. And I think like during the pandemic, they're just like, we're going to stop repairing stuff because... Why would we bother? Well, so the one that you go to was new. Like, it's like it's only, like, a couple years old. Yeah. The one that I always went to is now fully closed. My God. But, like, it was never nice. Yeah. Um, I'm starting, like, the veneer is peeling back, and I'm starting to see what's underneath, and I don't like it as much. We, so. we kind of quit going because the food was never as good as it once was. Yeah, last couple of times, Richard and I have both gotten, like, like bad food. So we don't get food there anymore. It's just popcorn. Dude, fucking Taylor's uh, coconut chicken. Uh-huh. She loves that stuff. I always get the coconut scramps. 
the past two times she's been like, no. Yeah. It's not good. Mine's always been all right because I just get the normal chicken strips. But I used to live on their chicken, their uh, grilled chicken Caesar salad. Yeah. And I got it one time and the Caesar dressing was like water. Oh, no. Like it was that thinned out. Yuck. Um. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I vomited for 10 years. It was <laughs> very bad. Okay, yeah. Um, the magic is wearing off for sure. Okay. So we went and saw Nightmare Alley. Ooh, oh, that's uh, the new Guillermo del Toro thing, right? Yes. With Willem Dafoe and Bradley Cooper? Yeah. Yeah. So that was my first question about this movie is like, okay, so Guillermo del Toro likes to get actors that just have like something a little bit weird going on with them, you know, like their, their look isn't typically not that he gets ugly actors, but he gets actors that have a, a strange feature about them, you know? Yeah. They have like an aesthetic, like a look. Yes. They yeah. stand out in a way. Right. So why Bradley Cooper? What does he see in him? Like Bradley Cooper is conventionally attractive. Like there's I kind of nothing... figured from the trailers, he was going to be like a normal person walking into the strange world or something. Yeah, that's kind of true. Yeah, he does play like the the seemingly normal guy that gets like wrapped up in the carny life. So yeah. maybe that's what he was going for. But yeah, he's like a charming dude and he's, you know, trying to find his way in the world and ends up getting a, a gig at Nightmare Alley. Well, it's not called Nightmare Alley. I don't know why I called it that. It's just okay. the their carnival. I don't know. Okay. Um, so he gets a gig there working as like one of those uh, mentalist guys. So he'll help read a crowd and be like, you, um, do you have a relative with the letter A? Okay. And it's one of those things. And he like stays in the carnival for years and like learns the business and eventually branches Damn. off on his own. And okay. I'm not going to spoil the whole plot of the movie because the plot actually is very interesting and very good. But my <laughs> only gripe about this movie, and it's not so much a gripe i guess as it is an expectation that i should have had going in um it's extremely depressing <laughs> like yeah, it's, yeah it's real sad and i don't know what else i w- should have expected rather than i don't i i knew it wasn't <laughs> gonna be a funny movie you know yeah. it's, Guillermo, it's Guillermo del Toro he doesn't do funny stuff but I didn't expect to be like so sad at the end of it. Like oh, even the you, next day, I was like, like sad, sad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's such a depressing movie. Like I, even the next morning I woke up and I was like, fuck that movie was sad. Oh my God. Like it's just, it takes the American dream and it just dissolves it down to its bare bones. And it's like, this is what it is. This is it. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it just makes you sad. I so, do want to see it though. It's good. It's not Oscar bait. I don't think he's going to win any awards for this one, but okay. It, I think it's worth a watch. It did get a little bit long, and I got a little bit tired in the middle of it. I did doze off, but well, yeah, I'm looking. It's it's like almost three hours. Yeah, it's fucking good long. Okay. I had a nap in the middle of it. Um, okay, That's but fair. it's it's good, but just like you're not going to cry. You're just going to leave it feeling kind of depressed. Kind of hollow. <laughs> yeah. That seems to be, like, where he's going now. Because, like, you said that you went and saw this earlier, and I was like, man, what else did he do? Because I felt like he did, like, a bunch of stuff. Yeah. He really hasn't done all that much. What's his career and look his, like? And his Guillermo. earlier stuff was not so sad. Every time I look up Guillermo del Toro, I'm just, like, fascinated at what a normal man he looks like, you know? I know. He just looks so... His, his Wikipedia article picture is just so cute. He's like... He's the cutest dude. He's I just adorable. Him. So he did the movie Mimic, which I've never seen, but I've seen the cover a bunch, like at Blockbuster and stuff. Yeah. And then I didn't know he directed Blade 2. Like, what? Wow. I, I didn't know he directed Mama. He did not direct Mama. What is this? So there's, like, the movies that he, like, produced and stuff... So he does a lot of like, hey, I'll help ah. you get the funds for this movie. Okay, so yeah, producer and or writer he worked on. Yeah. I see. But like as like his movies like that like are his, he's only got like less than 10. Oh, dang. Uh but like Hellboy, I love Hellboy. Pan's Labyrinth, super sad. 
that's my ultimate favorite Guillermo del Toro movie. Like that is so good. I think it's the peak of what he's ever done. Man. Yeah. That movie's phenomenal. I saw that for my birthday one year, actually. Everyone will fight me and say it's Shape of Water, but Shape of Water kind of sucks, dude. I still haven't seen it. I would like to, but I don't want to be disappointed. And I know that everyone was disappointed. <laughs> and then it won an Oscar, so I don't I don't. Know. I don't think anybody was disappointed but me. Really? Literally, everybody I know thinks it's the greatest movie ever made. Okay. I, I do want to watch it. And here's the thing. It's a good movie. I'm not saying it's bad at all. It it just was not best picture movie for me. Okay. Even Crimson Peak. Crimson Peak is good. Mm. Like, I don't think about that movie a lot, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that's a good movie. But, like, I think about Pan's Labyrinth, you know? Oh, yeah, all the time. That movie just lives in my brain. I it's think so about good. that and Hellboy 2, because Hellboy 2 was the shit. Love Hellboy 2. As I was leaving Nightmare Alley, I was like, you know what? This would have been, like, a really good, like, book. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's actually based on a book now that I'm looking it up. Okay. Because, I mean, it was it was so long and it didn't need to be that long. They could have cut some stuff. He does take a lot of short stories or, like, books and turn them into movies. Okay. That's a big thing. So it's not getting great reviews, actually. I guess the world's depressed enough and they're like, we don't need this. Yeah, I was just wanted I just wanted something a little better. Like I thought it was just like fun con minute carnivals, but no, it's sad. I thought it was gonna be more like just like spooky, you know? Yeah, I thought it was like some kind of dark carnival or something spooky happened. Like, oh maybe one of the acts is real. Well, but no, it's just like it's just sad. It's just the sad lives of Carmies. Because, see, that's kind of like Crimson Peak. I thought Crimson Peak was going to be, like, super spooky, right? It looks like a scary movie. It was kind of billed as a scary movie, right? Yeah. But it's not that spooky. And Crimson Peak is not as sad as, I think, Nightmare Alley is. I mean, it's still, like, a little, like, oh, shit, that's, that, that sucks, you know? Yeah. But it's, it's definitely not as spooky as it was played up to be. You know? Okay. But I didn't really think Pan's Labyrinth was spooky. I just thought it was Oh, I thought that intriguing. was fucking spooky. The dude with the eyeballs? I can't get that out of my head. I mean, I don't think he's spooky, though. I just think he's cool looking. He does, he does good with, like, creatures, you know? Yeah. He does good with that stuff. And then I feel like I would be beat to beat to shit if I didn't point out that he did Pacific Rim. Because Taylor fucking loves that movie. <laughs> That's like Don't her favorite movie chopped. of his. You know what? I might need to double check because she likes Shape of Water too. Oh, really? Man, everybody loves Shape of Water. It's it's good. But like, I've never been like, I'd like to watch that again. Yeah. Like, it was okay. I think mostly because it wasn't a secret Hellboy movie like I was hoping. <laughs> okay. Because the guy that's in Shape of Water is clearly Abe from Hellboy. But it's not. And I was mm. like, well, boo. I was hoping for Hellboy shit. But, like, he's just awesome. He does he he does a lot of writing. He writes a lot of stuff, actually. He's got a ton of writing credits. I just love this man. Like, he's I just so looking neat. at all the stuff that he's done in his life, and I just love him. He's produced so many movies that I fucking love, dude. Like, yeah. Splice. Ooh. God, I love Splice, man. Fuck. It's so good. He apparently did uh, Kung Fu Panda 2, Puss in Boots. What? <laughs> Dude, he is into Kung Fu Panda. He executive produced 2 and 3. What? He what? saw that first one was like, oh, I'm getting those next two made, oh buddy. God, gotta get that panda money. Bizarre. I didn't realize he was so into DreamWorks. Actually, I should know that because he has a show that DreamWorks makes. That really? like he, he wrote. It's called Troll Hunters. Okay. And it looks so little kid. <laughs> but my brother made me watch some of it one one time. It's fucking dark, dude. It's good. I need to finish it. It was a pretty good show. Uh it's like the kid stuff that I like where like there's like legit stakes, like mm. mean bad villains and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Troll Hunters is the shit, man. <laughs> okay. But uh well, I'm sad that it's not as good as we hoped. Yeah, I think you should like watch it. it because I think 
you have the potential to enjoy it. I just <laughs> don't go into it thinking it's going to be like fun carnival times. Yeah. Because it's not. Well, now I know it's also not as spooky as I was hoping, so. Yeah, it's not spooky at okay. all. There's no spook element. Take that out of my expectations then. Yeah. Uh, speaking of things that you will enjoy, but they're not that great. I got to I gotta touch on this one again. Okay. Because uh, TikTok, after Christmas Eve, blew up because Encanto was released on Disney Plus for free on Christmas Eve. So for Christmas, oh. everybody got to watch Encanto, and now TikTok cannot leave it alone. Okay. I think you just need to watch it. All right. I'm, I want to know what you think. So it's free on Disney Plus, right? Yes, it is on okay. Disney Plus. Just go watch it. But I wanted to bring it up because I think I think I see a pattern with okay. I don't know the guy's name still that made Hamilton. Like I don't I don't Lin-Manuel know his name. Miranda. That dude. I'm never going to learn that by the way. <laughs> um I think I know the deal. Cuz I was thinking about that movie and I was like it's so kind of forgettable for me. Like there's things in it that I liked, right? Okay. But like it it just didn't stick with me. And I was like, "Ooh, you know what? He's done another movie." That Kelsey saw, and she literally forgot about it the next day. <laughs> In the Into heights, the yes. Heights, right? Yeah. I think he makes great music that would work for the stage, but I think when he transitions it to movies, it doesn't hit the same way. Well, that's the thing about In the Heights, is that it was, it was really like a stage musical but brought to the silver screen like it was very much kind of chicago-y in that way where they had those big musical numbers that looked like they would have been absolutely yeah. cool on a stage but they they still worked on a movie but you didn't remember it like it yeah. didn't land with you it didn't like hit me in my heart i think if i was you know an immigrant living in new york or something of course i would be like about this movie but yeah for me it was just like it didn't well, see like, maybe that's land in my the soul other thing he he makes too niche of a, of a group that his work is, like, targeted towards. Maybe, yeah. I mean, it, it was a good story. Don't get me wrong. And it's a story worth telling. I thought it was, you know, well done. But it just didn't, like, affect me in the way that a yeah. movie about, I don't know, people I can directly relate more to would well, hit me. Because that's what I thought about Encanto. I was like, this looks like it would be a great stage production. Okay. Like, I think I'd really get into it on a stage, but, like, it it just doesn't feel as good in a cinema form. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't hit the same. I mean, the story's still pretty good. It's very heavily targeted at living in a Latino family. Okay. That's, that's where this is aimed towards. Okay. You know? Well, I mean, of course he's going to go for that because of his heritage. Well, yeah. We were watching parts of it again, and what I think pushed me away from it a bit more, it made me think of when we were in Tennessee, and I pointed out diners and drive-ins and stuff, how they cut every, like, two seconds. Yeah. (laughs) This movie feels like it's just too fast. If they would ever, like, relax and let you sit in these moments, I think it would affect you more. Mm. And, like, when a song comes on... I feel like they take, because, like, when it's, like, just the movie, the characters are so, dude, he does so good with the characters. They're so real and believable, right? Yeah. And then it's, like, they lose all that characterization during song moments. Okay. Like, they become, like, a music video version of themselves. And it just, sometimes it doesn't feel right to the to those people. Like, I think it's a good movie that was executed poorly. Mm, okay. For like what it is, but TikTok is so about it. Okay, is they just like into the music or? No, they're into like what it's about. Ah, the music is a big thing, but like, so the movie's about generational trauma. Ah, TikTok loves trauma. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, I saw a TikTok today that I sent to Taylor, and it was this girl, and she goes, "I watched Encanto with my boyfriend, and I learned that there are." Real live people that don't know what generational trauma is. Oh, my God. (laughs) There are live people that don't have that baggage. What is that about? (laughs) (laughs) 
you know, they're really picking up on that stuff. There's some really cool theories that people take from it. Yeah. Taylor's TikTok page is Encanto only right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, like, I've been getting a couple here and there, and there's some people going, like, let's discuss this character and, like, what this means. And it's actually a pretty deep movie. Okay. Like, like the way they set it up, but, like, it's not stuff that's really said. So unless you're just going to sit there and pick it apart, none of that hits you. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to watch it again, like, beginning, just, like, all the way through and see what I think, like, for the second time. Because I'm like, maybe I had a different... You know my thing uh, about expectations. That can ruin a movie on the first go-round. Yeah. So what was I expecting that I didn't get? So I'm like, it's okay. And maybe now that I'm aware of it, I can pick it apart better. You know what I mean? Sure. But I think, I think it's worth a watch because everybody is so into it right now. And I know you like the zeitgeist. I do like the zeitgeist. I think you got to at least know. And it's a short movie. It's a Disney movie. It's fine. Yeah. So it's not going to be like another three hour commitment. Plus you like the, you know, his music. You liked Into the Heights music, so I feel like you'll like this music. It's all the same. I'm good. Okay. Um, but I would like to tell you what my TikTok page is all about. What is it? Uh, Spider-Man. Oh, Spider-Man. <laughs> I told you guys I was going spoilers. I'm going spoilers. You ready? I am ready because I still don't know what this movie is like about. Yeah. There's no fucking hesitating. You guys knew. I put it. I put a date in the show <laughs> last time. Here we go. Ismail, hopefully I have taken you to see this movie by the time you hear this. You fucking better have. Yeah. I gotta, like, make that happen. It was all because Christmas and shit ruined everything. <laughs> Christmas is... Christmas, yeah. you're ruined Spider-Man. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this out of the way to begin with. Okay. Yes. They're all in it, man. Okay, good. Toby Maguire's in it. Andrew Garfield's in it. It's perfect. It's are they beautiful. Like, are they in it, in it, or did they just like flash in like, I'm Tobey Maguire and I'm here? They are in the last like 30, 40 minutes. Okay, so enough of the movie. Yeah, so it's like a two hour movie and they're in like the last fourth. Okay. So I mean, they're in it a decent amount. Yeah. But like, it was getting to the point where people were like, maybe they're really not. Like, they're still not here. The ending's coming up. I guess it's not going to happen. And then it fucking happened, man. Mm. Um, I'm sending you a TikTok that I would like for you to watch really quick. Okay. And this was no joke the way that it was when I went to see it. Because I need you to watch this TikTok so you can understand the mood of Jesus this movie. Jesus Christ. People are out of their seats. This is, <laughs> this is, this is how it was, man. Everyone's, like, got their phones out filming the screen. What are you doing? Oh, my God. This is so much. This is real life, man. This dude is, like, losing his shit. Okay. Oh this is a God. bad video because this guy has, like, he's slowly turning into a werewolf or something. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, losing it. Oh, my God. Dude. <laughs> The noise is coming out of this man. What is... We're going to have to link this TikTok in the show yeah. notes. They're all chanting Toby. They're all... Oh, my God. Dude, when Andrew showed up, my theater broke out into one of the loudest applause I'd ever heard in my life. Endgame was, like, a big deal. People, like, all felt this thing, but, like... <laughs> I can't handle the amount of energy <laughs> in this... Fucking uh. <laughs> Do you know how many TikToks I have saved of like opening night things <laughs> like that? Oh my god. Because that's how it was. It was electric in the theater, if it's man. It's possible. I want you to <laughs> just splice in the audio from this TikTok because holy shit. These people I cannot try. calm down. Dude, when they showed up, the place exploded. So Andrew's entrance is the fucking best dude if you are like a spider-man fan you knew it was him even when he was far away okay because everybody's suit looks different uh. and as soon as he was there i was like that's fucking andrew dude and he comes in and you're like oh well maybe we still don't know and he rips that mask off dude 
I watch reaction videos of these scenes all the time. Oh my god. I know that I'm spoiling it for you now, but I was going to reach out to Ricardo and see if he could stage like a like Spider-Man night where people wanted to get hype in the theater and take you to it to like feel the actual hype. Oh my god. Because we've seen it again and like the theater's dead. Really? And it ruins it. And I find so many TikToks of like moments that happen and you'll hear one person go, "Woo! Oh, we're not doing that." <laughs> oh. Everybody knows what's going to happen and we still want to explode. Like Endgame didn't do that for people. This is like a celebration. We don't care that we know. We just want to feel it again. Why is it so intense about this movie in particular? Like, what about this is making people turn into werewolves? It's fucking Spider-Man, dude. (laughs) First of all, Toby came out of Spider-Man in, like, 2002. I was 12 years old. Damn. And 20 years later, he comes back. For for the people that are... That are like going crazy like that. It's because this is 20 years coming together all at once. Okay. This is like 20 years of seeing Toby do it. Now Andrew does it. And then here's Tom doing it. And then we all mingle it together. But what I like is it brings Andrew and Toby in from like a today point of time. Like it's not like, okay, this is Toby from Spider-Man 3. It's like him having aged from when Spider-Man 3 came out to today, and he's brought in in this current time. Okay. How and the old same is with Toby McGuire? Andrew. He's like 40-something. He's like almost 50. Toby. I'm thinking he's got to be like late 40s. 46. My God. Yeah. Uh, he's still as perfect as ever. He is my Spider-Man, dude. I, I love his little face. I just face. love him. He's so darn cute. I hate... Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, right? Okay. They're the absolute worst. I'm sorry, Desi's going to fucking shit. <laughs> but after this movie, I need him back. Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield? Andrew Garfield. Okay. He never got a part three. Everybody else has so far. He got like the short end of the stick and didn't get to complete his trilogy. Do people just, like, not like him and that's why, or? No. His his movie was the lowest grossing Spider-Man movie that had existed. Oh. And Marvel had been like, can we put Spider-Man in the Marvel movies? Like, we'll make tons of money. <laughs> so Sony was like, let's just cut it now and go make money with Marvel. Okay. So they transitioned to Tom. There's a Spider-Man 3 that's going to come out with Andrew now because the hype was so big when he came back. Really? Yeah. Like, confirmed? Pretty much. Wow. Like, this movie's changing people's careers <laughs> again. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, what did Tobey Maguire do before Spider-Man? I'm just, like, trying to remember what his life was. Did he do something? I only know him post it because he did the Cider House Rules and um, oh. sea, sea Biscuit. Oh, he that was, was all Pleasantville. Post- Huh? He was in Pleasantville. Now I remember. I thought he was in Pleasantville, but I was like, maybe I'm thinking of the Cider House rules. Dude, when you see all these people come back, like all the old villains, Willem Dafoe was in your movie, right? Yes. Oh, he's so much better in my movie. I can guarantee it. (laughs) I'm sure he he is. He loves being the Green Goblin. God, he is the Green Goblin. He straight up told the people, I'm 66 years old. Oh my God. But if I don't get to do all my own stunts, I don't want to come back. Jesus. <laughs> he said, that's how you make it real. That's how you make it work. And so he did all of his own stunts. All right. And he does some good stunt. Man, there's some fights in this movie that are just brutal. This is a hardcore movie. Yeah. <sighs> so there's all these villains. Um, it turns out that this Spider-Man movie... Is the origin story for Tom Holland's Peter Parker. So, like, Toby got his in part one. Andrew got his in part one. It turns out these three movies constitute his one origin story. Jesus. Because his Aunt May dies. Okay. Shit. She dies doing the whole with great power comes great responsibility stuff. Yeah. And, like, 
I was watching some reviews, and people are right. The Marvel movies are pretty bad about, like, something sad will happen, and then here comes the funny side character, and let's, like, pull you out of that sadness, right? Yeah. This movie leaves you in wallowing sadness, like, three times. (laughs) Oh, no. Like, when she dies, there's no laughter for, like, 15 minutes. Oh, God. Like, they leave you in the sadness, and they made it perfect. I don't know. I know you're not very Spider-Man. But, like, one thing the movies never did great is that J. Jonah Jameson has New York convinced that he's bad. Oh. And everybody hates Spider-Man. Like, that's, like, a big trope. Like, the newspaper slanders him, so New York doesn't trust him. But yet they rely on him. Because he's a bad guy. Like, J. Jonah, like, completely labels him in the news as a bad guy. Okay. And people believe it, because, I mean, it's... It's it's the news, you know? Yeah. Well, after his Aunt May fucking dies, J. Jonah Jameson gets on the news and says that he's the one that killed her. Oh, what? Can you imagine being the being this person? You see your only like family member die and then you get blamed for it? It's pretty publicly. Fucked up. <laughs> like they make you sit in that with him for a, like a really long time. God. And then that's when the other Spider-Man dudes come in and then they start talking, well, my Uncle Ben died. And then Andrew's big one is that his girlfriend died. I don't think you've ever seen his movies either, right? Uh, No, I've only ever seen Toby's. But you know that Emma Stone dies in his last Spider-Man movie, right? I did not know that. Okay. (laughs) So a big deal with Spider-Man is that he has this one girlfriend that gets thrown off of uh, a bridge and he webs her and catches her. But when he like stops her, the force causes her neck to snap. And so he accidentally killed her. Christ. That's like a old, old Spider-Man story. Okay. Shit. And Andrew's Spider-Man brought in that character and she dies. It's way worse than his though. (laughs) Cause he throws down the web to catch her. And when he does, it's a little elastic, you know? Yeah. So she stops just enough that her head snaps back and just cracks on the pavement below. Oh, my God. And she's fucking dead, bro. Like, it's bad. Horrible scene. And Andrew's a fantastic actor. So, of course, his crying is gut-wrenching. You Ugh. Know? Yeah. Plus, he was really dating her at the time. So I bet that just Aww. made it worse for him. Do all the Spider-Men date Gwen Stacy or whoever... What's her face? You mean they're like, I guess that's something that I can get into. I mean, the like standard is Peter Parker gets with Mary Jane. Yeah. And in Andrews, it was always Gwen because they went a little further back in the comic line. Okay. But there was a Mary Jane in the movies. But like as far as the co-stars go, because I know Tom Holland and Zendaya have a thing. Yes. I saw a TikTok that there's a producer lady that has produced all the sp- spider-man films and she was like you guys don't fall in love with your co-stars and they've all fallen in love with each (laughs) every single one of them did that's kind of amazing honestly (laughs) but i was like okay you get these young attractive actors together have them fall in love on screen and feel like they're not gonna fall in love in real life like and have these emotional ass scenes my god yeah of course you're gonna fall in love with them you know of course who wouldn't So they all do. They all did. So uh, the end of this movie, the the ending 30 minutes is like one giant fight. Oh, shit. With all three Spider-Mans and all these villains and shit, right? So they have the Green Goblin. They have Doc Ock. Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Electro, the Lizard, Sandman. The Lizard. The Lizard doesn't do too much, which is sad, but I think that's about it. It's those five. Who's the Lizard? Who plays him? I can't think of it. I, it's the guy from The Replacements. Ole, 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 ole. Oh, my God. Right. That guy. Okay. <laughs> I don't know his name, so I call him that. <laughs> um, who plays the wizard? Hang on. When I see his name. Reese Ifens? Yes. Yes, I, that's it. I don't know. I know that's not how you say his name. Like, I've heard his name said, and it is not that. Yeah, I don't know, but I know who you're talking about. But yeah, so funny enough for the Sandman and the Lizard, those two actors never 
actually came back. Oh. They they only did voice acting work, and then for the Sandman, they actually reused footage from Spider-Man 3. What? Yeah, like, that guy was filming another movie, so they couldn't, like, really bring him back. Dang, okay. But he did record the voice lines at a later date, so that's fun, I guess. Yeah. But so, there's this big battle at the end. All these Spider-Men are doing stuff, and... Here's another scene where everybody freaked out. Ready? Okay. There's a big old fight. Tom Holland's Mary Jane Zendaya falls off uh, the Statue of Liberty. So he jumps off to save her. And Green Goblin swoops in and, like, knocks him away. And it's all in slow motion. So, like, he's reaching for her and then he gets pulled away and he can't save her. So, like, the theater was freaking out. They're like, what's going to happen? Ugh. And guess who does it? Oh. Andrew Garfield does it. Now remember, oh, shit. he caught his girlfriend and she died. Okay. This is a post that moment Spider-Man. So he approaches the situation differently and he does save her and like redeems his character arc. You know? Aw, that's nice. Like these two Spider-Men have moments of growth from their previous fucking movies in this movie. That's awesome. They wrap things around, like like a Toby line that was said 20 years ago. It comes back full circle with Doc Ock in this random fucking Marvel movie. <laughs> like, if you have been watching these these three people for, like, the past 20 years, all of this means a lot to us. Okay. We were there when Gwen died with Andrew, and it sucked. And he gets to save somebody, finally. And it's so... Awful, man. <laughs> he, 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 he catches her and he's standing there and he goes, are you okay? And she says, yes. And he starts crying Oh, because he finally did it. Like he got to save the girl. And then what made me cry was she goes, are you okay? And it makes oh. him cry more. So sad. If you had just watched this, you're like, uh, I don't know why he's crying, <laughs> you know, but like if you remember when Gwen died and how ugly that was. Yeah. That that moment is a huge payoff for that specific character, you know? Yeah. That's why this movie's blowing up the world so much. It's if you kind of grew up with these people or have been following these people, you know? Yeah. This movie fucking chewed me up and spit me out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's so phenomenal. But seeing them all together, and there there's some moments where they play off of each other that are great. Uh, there's jokes that Taylor didn't remember things from the Toby stuff. I'm busting out laughing. She's like, well, what's the deal with that? <laughs> and I was like, it's literally a throwaway line from part two. Peter in Spider-Man 2, he's trying to get his powers back, and he jumps off of a building... And his powers didn't fully come back, so he falls and hits a car way down below. Yeah. And he gets up and he's like, my back! My back! And it's like a funny joke for that movie. Yeah. Well, in this movie, he's like, yeah, gotta gotta stretch. He's like, I don't know, man, my my back hurts. (laughs) So Andrew is like, oh, you want me to pop your back for you? And he's like, yeah, that would be great. So there's a whole scene in the movie of two Spider-Men just cracking each other's backs. Oh, my God. (laughs) And the theater's fucking just eating it up, man. They're just like, yes, his back! (laughs) Just like going crazy. It felt like when I saw episode three of Star Wars. Wow, okay. Where like people knew what was coming, but it didn't matter. Yeah. It was happening. You know what I mean? It's like a culmination of what everything was building to all along. This is a culmination of my whole fucking life. Like (laughs) Spider-Man has been the only Marvel thing I've ever cared about. Like, the Marvel movies taught me Captain and all that stuff, but, I mean, they're okay. There's none of them that matter at all like Spider-Man does for me. Okay. Spider-Man has been my thing since I was, like, born. Yeah. I've always loved him. So this movie is huge, but I have to ruin it some more for you because it is depressing still. Okay. This movie ends on the saddest of sads. Why? For how amazing it is. Uh, The whole thing was he got outed in the last movie as being Peter Parker. Okay. Uh, 
Jake Gyllenhaal or Mysterio goes, oh, by the way, Spider-Man's Peter Parker. I'm dead now. And then he dies. <laughs> okay. So now the world knows that this kid is Spider-Man. And so the whole point of the movie is he asked Doctor Strange to do a spell that everybody forgets that he's Spider-Man. But he keeps going, oh, we'll change it so this person remembers. Well, I want my girlfriend to remember. Oh, my best friend's got to know. And so he keeps changing it, and it causes this rift in the multiverse where anybody that knows Peter Parker is Spider-Man st- is starting to like converge in this world. Okay. So that's why these two Spider-Men are there. Of course, they know Spider-Man's Peter Parker. They are Peter Parker. <laughs> you know? Right. But now, in any version of the multiverse where anybody could know Peter Parker is Spider-Man, they're starting to like converge here. And it's going to, like, break space-time or some shit. Okay. So to cure it, he goes, make make everybody forget that I exist. Oh, no. Literally they exist? Everybody. And so Doctor Strange is like, that means, like, nobody will know. He's like, I won't know who you are. The Avengers that you saved the world with, nobody will know that you helped with that. Oh, my God. You're going to be, like faceless nothing to anybody he can't even graduate high school at the end of the movie because they don't know who he is what so people don't know who peter parker is and people don't know who spider-man is like like people just forgot that this man exists entirely kind of yeah that's fucked up so now he is basically starting from square one what about zendaya she doesn't know no. so so like there's a whole scene where he's like you're gonna forget who i am and she's like, but I love you. And he's like, well, I, and, and, and then she's like, don't, don't even say it. When you find me again, tell me you love me then. God. And he goes to her later, but he sees how much better their life is without him in it. So he <laughs> leaves her alone. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, ah, love stories like that really fucked me up. Yeah. One of the big things that people didn't like about Tom Spider-Man is he's always had Iron Man's help. Iron Man gave him his first suit everything the computer system that 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 stark had built that knows him doesn't know him so now he's lost access to all of his suits all of his technology I he hate couldn't this. he couldn't graduate high school so it ends with him uh getting a ged study book so he can get a ged he's nothing and i guess it's a little better because his aunt may is dead so she couldn't forget him <laughs> <laughs> but like he's got nowhere to live because no one would know him. He can't go sleep on a friend's cat. Like, he's got nothing at the end of this movie. Well, that sucks. Is it a cliffhanger? Like, that's how it ends? That's how it ends, yeah. Oh, my God. But Are they it, another one? He's actually getting a whole new trilogy. It's called The College Years. Holy shit. Like, I mean, this movie did gangbusters. But because Tom this Holland is essentially... Is set for life, dude. Like, he's got that role dude. on lock. Yeah, dude. Like, he is fine forever now. God damn. But because this was like essentially his origin story, we got the Spider-Man everybody was waiting for. Yeah. It it ends with the most comic accurate suit that has ever existed on screen because he doesn't have access to the Stark stuff. So he sews his own suit by the end and it ends with him swinging in this brand new suit that is so good. That's kind of amazing. Like, Do you have a picture of the suit? I want to see it. Yeah, hang on. Uh, no way home. I'm really surprised at how little the spoilers have, like, taken over the internet. People, like, are leaving yeah. it alone. People kept it buttoned up, which I guess says a lot about the fandom. And the fact that they're still going to the movie, hoping to get the same reactions. <laughs> <laughs> basically, cool basically, that's how it looks. Very nice. There's some more stuff. Like, I knew one thing, but it doesn't really mean a lot to me. But... They've essentially now made Toby's movies and Andrew's movies official MCU related. Oh, good. So I told Taylor I have to like change my shelf because now those movies <laughs> go on that shelf. <laughs> okay. And they just made all the Netflix shows. Do you remember all the Netflix shows that were coming out years ago? There was like Daredevil, Jessica Jones. Oh, yeah. Luke Cage and stuff. Uh-huh. They just became official MCU as well. Were they not previously? Not really. Like, they were supposed to be, but then they kind of just got, like, abandoned and left behind. Weird. 
but the guy who plays Daredevil in the Netflix show is in this movie. Oh, nice. And the crowd went fucking berserk, man. Hell yeah. So that just became real, which means there's going to be Daredevil stuff now. Yeah. But that also opened it up for, well, now we can see all the Netflix people. That means uh, the Punisher, played by Shane from The Walking Dead. Yes. He can exist in this now. This literally opened up every... This opened the door to everything. Open the doors, open the windows. That actually... The end credit scene for this was the trailer for the next Doctor Strange movie. Oh, cool. Because th- that trailer and that movie are solely predicated on what happens in this. And basically what's going to happen, like I know it's going to happen, the X-Men are going to come in finally. All right. We could have one final Hugh Jackman Wolverine cameo. Oh my god. <laughs> He's too old. <laughs> no, he. Oh no, he is not. No, he he's is not. So beautiful. But like, we're probably gonna get Fantastic Four, X Men. So many multiverse things are about to come in with this next Doctor Strange movie. It's gonna like shake up everything. This That's movie exciting. changed the whole of what can be in these movies now. All right, we're in a whole new era. Uh, it was fucking phenomenal. It was great. I want to see it a thousand more times. Anytime we see something about Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, we cry. (laughs) But, I mean, there's, like, way too many tiny details that I could go into. But, because of Tom Hardy's Venom and some lines that are said, it's, like, pretty much assured Andrew's getting a new set of movies. And he'll be in the same world as Tom Hardy's Venom Jared Leto's Morbius and all that stuff. Oh my stuff. god. I saw a preview in Nightmare Alley for Morbius and I was like, what the fuck is this weird alternate universe Batman? It's Man Bat. I don't I was so creeped out by it. I have never seen this this character before. That is a Spider Man villain. Okay. That is it's strictly Spider Man. It it's it's very creepy. I love Morbius, dude. He's so awesome. And yeah, Jared Leto does a good job at him. Like, just in the trailer, I was like, I have the creeps. <laughs> Dude, the way he looks in that is perfect. Yeah, it looked... I, I, I can't even put words to it. It was more like a horror movie than a comic book oh, yeah. movie. Like, it looked cool. Because you know that I don't like how Venom looks in those new ones. Morbius looks perfect. Okay. Like, like spot on. That's, like, how I would picture him fully. But even in his trailer... There's some hints as to what happened in this movie will take place in his world. So it seems like we might have Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man movies and Tom Holland's Spider-Man movies happening at the same time. Yeah. Plus, we have Spider-Verse now, too. Like, there might be three separate universes of Spider-Man movies happening all at once in this world. And I'm I am I'm ready. (laughs) (laughs) I'll see all of them. That's exciting. We live in we live in thrilling times. That's Spider-Man. It was fantastic. And I want to take you to a theater of people that care. I don't want you to see this movie Dead Fish. Like, you've never been to a theater that was excited, right? Yeah. Like, you've never been in one where, like, people jumped up and cheered? I mean, I think... Not at the end of a movie, because I've been in plenty where, like, they'll applaud at the end of a movie. Yeah, the closest thing I could think of is going into Star Wars 7 where people were like, oh my god, they're going to continue it. But then, like, that excitement died off pretty quickly, I feel. That's that's ugly to me. Because, <laughs> like, every Star Wars movie that I've seen has been, like, opening night and people scream and they freak out. Yeah. None were as memorable as when I saw Episode 3 because that was the first movie I experienced that in. Yeah, man. I wish I had been a Star Wars fan at the time Episode 3 came out. And then Endgame, dude. The, ima- the like, sh- it's that it's that shared um, feeling and emotion. That's what makes it interesting. Yeah. Because I know that if you saw this Spider-Man, you wouldn't feel the same thing. But I think if you were like, I can feel it in the room. Yeah. You might be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so it's great. Uh, Ismail, I hope you enjoyed it. And we cried together and held each other. But I am also planning on taking off pretty soon to go to that LED screen in Houston. So 
I can report back on that sometime soon. I want you to go see that. I'm hoping that'll be next week. So Yes. Okay. Well, are you ready to swing into a new era of film? I am ready to thwip it up, man. Uh, all right. For the first time in 2022, I would like to ask you to please tell your friends about us and help us grow this audience. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your very most favorite platform so you never, ever miss an episode because we release weekly every single Monday here for you throughout the holidays, throughout the long weekends. We are every single Monday, every single time. And if you have a second to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, that helps us reach many more lovely listeners just like you. And you can go on out there and find us and friend us on every social media, whatever your platform is of choice. We are on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. We do the Twitch stuff quite often. We're hoping to do some more stuff in the future. Maybe not game related. We're getting into some more stuff for you guys. 2022 will be a a bold year moving forward in ways we never have before. And also, we want to thank our patrons yet again. You guys help us out so much. We love you guys so much. The Discord has been popping all over Christmas. So many different discussions and topics. We've been getting into some stuff. I love going in there and reading stuff. It's fantastic. Got stuff happening. But I want to know what you thought of Spider-Man. I want you to send me that to our email, ymbtoap at gmail.com. Whatever you want. If you want to tell me what you got for Christmas... If you've played the games that Kelsey's playing, if you saw Spider-Man, you hated it. If you saw Nightmare Alley, thought it was the most interesting movie ever, I want to know. Oh, and send us your Rose Rose Thorn Buds. We did get one that we uh, just ran out of time to read in this episode, I guess. But uh, next episode, look forward to more of those. Yes, Um, I want more. More! Send more. More. Never satiated. Never satisfied. Uh, our theme song is The Groom Apron Blows the Horn by Farage. Please check him out on YouTube and give him some New Year love. And as always, thank you so much for listening and tune in next time to get the answer to that burning question. What if Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane fell in love? But we had one more important sound we wanted you to hear. Andrew has been talking about his MJ being a guy and having a bisexual Peter Parker. Oh, cool. I like that. We stand by Spider-Man. (laughs) Spider-Man. It's not going to happen because they've already filmed (laughs) some scenes with somebody else. Oh. But you've seen him kissing Stephen Colbert, right? Um, no, but I'm about to Google it. Uh, yeah. Sorry, guys, but that's all you get from this ending.